My new toy that I picked up online is a Southern MP Southern uh, MPXS08 lock picking set. Comes in this nice leather pouch. I uh, you know just now starting getting started in lock picking. I played around with it a tiny bit before, but never actually got around to buying buying a real lock picking set. I was you know always trying to get things with open with paper clips and prongs of forks and whatnot. Uh, it's much nicer when you have the correct tools, I must say. So, uh, this was about 30 bucks. I picked it up online. You know, that was after taxes and shipping and handling and everything. You'd, pro you'd probably find it cheaper, even. Uh, but yeah, let's open it up, take a look. Comes with two tension wrenches. You have uh, just one at a 90 degree angle. They're both almost, they're the exact same size, same length and width and everything. I sort of wish that uh, one was a little bit bigger than the other, just so you had some more variety there, but two tension wrenches. Also comes with two rakes. You have your W rake, also known as a snake rake. It also has a sawtooth rake. It's fairly large, uh, a bit too big for like the, the padlocks that I've been playing with. In addition to that, it has two half diamonds, a medium half diamond, and a small half diamond, as you can see. It has your standard pick, which is what you're going to be using for most things if you just want to play around, do, you know, I'm trying to do one pin at a time. Probably the most used tool out of this, to, for, besides the uh, tension wrenches. And it also has a little round lock that I've yet to use. I've heard it's good for doing, uh, like, wafer locks on desks and whatnot. I uh, don't have any of that type to play around with yet, but if I see one for cheap or at a garage sale or something, I'll pick it up and play with it. It is legal to own lockpicks in pretty much all, everywhere in the United States. Um, might be a bad idea to carry it with you because you can be charged with uh, possession of burglary tools. If you have like an intent to commit burglary, or if you were already committing burg burglary, um, but they could also you know charge you with just having having a hammer or something in your car, pr pretty much anything. So pretty much legal to own, and uh, you know I just thought I'd play around with it. With it, useful skill to have. You ever get locked out of your apartment or? You know, locked out of a bike lock or whatnot, lose your keys. It's always good to have a lockpick set around. Uh, here's just a few demonstrations of me playing with it. Welcome to Lockpicking 101. I am horrible at drawing, so... Enjoy my horrible handwriting and pictures as I talk. They may or may not actually be beneficial, since they may or may not look anything like a real lock. You have been warned. So, first component that's of relevance inside a lock is this little cylinder. And this is called the plug. So if you look at a lock, this gold part in the middle where the actual keyhole is, that's the plug. The plug rotates within the casing. So it's just a cylinder. And inside the cylinder, well, let's start at the top here. So, this is the top of the casing. And these are springs. As I said, I am a horrible drawer. This particular lock is four pins, so I'll go ahead and draw four. So, lock has something like this. You have your spring, and you have, you have these two pieces of a pin. The top part of the pin is called the driver pin. And the driver pin actually gets pushed by the key. Um, or it gets pushed by the spring, so all these stay you know, relatively in a down position unless you insert a key. These bottom parts are called the key pins. And right along the top of the plug, this kind of dotted line here, 
what's known as the shear line. So what happens is you insert a key, it pushes up these pins different amounts depending on the size of these pins so that this, this little part where the, the two pins meet, they all line up with the shear line so the cylinder is able to turn. The driver pins get pushed up and they stay up in, into the casing and the, the key pins, they actually line up and then they just stay inside of the, the plug and they basically fall down within the plug. And then the plug can rotate freely because the only thing that's keeping it from rotating the rest of the time is these, these pins blocking it. Uh, so lock picking basically, and the way locks are designed, there's you know problems with manufacturing, slight variances, and if it's theoretically a perfect lock, you have to push up all these pins at the same time in order to unlock it. You put in the key, it pushes in the push up the pins to the right amount, and is able to unlock. In reality, uh, the pins basically stick in such a way they bind that you can actually pick them one pin at a time. So most of these pins will just be free. When you apply a pressure to the plug one of these pins usually will bind, which means it'll actually be, you'll, when you push it up on, the, on, the, push up on one of the pins with the pick, instead of just moving freely up and down, you'll feel pressure. So you push it up, push it up, and then it gets to the point where it actually hits the shear line, and the plug will rotate a little bit. And then once the plug rotates, you move on to the next pin. It'll be binding on a different pin. So you just go back and forth, trying to find the pin that's binding, and push it up slightly. That's the basic way that you pick locks using a tension wrench to apply a slight pressure to the plug to cause the pins to bind, and then a pick to actually individually go in, find which pin is binding, push it to the shear line, and then hopefully you feel that, you can feel the slight movement, and then you move on to the next pin. Um, another type of lock picking is called raking, in which case you actually just take a, uh, a certain type of pick and you go back and forth and back and forth, and it's kind of like uh, the Newton's Cradle, where they have those, I'm sure you've seen these. You have the ball, metal marbles on a string. So if you have a bunch of those little marbles on a string, and you pull this one out, and you let it go, instead of these actually moving, it hit the, the, the force gets transferred between them, and actually, this is the one that moves out. And it's the same idea when you're doing either bump keys or raking. Basically, you go back and forth and back and forth, and you, you hit these pins. And instead of this pin getting pushed into the way of the shear line, this pin doesn't move much at all. It just moves a little bit. But this pin, and all these pins, the, the driver pins get shoved up, the springs contract, and suddenly you have this big space between, between all of them, where the, the driver pins all get pushed up to the top, and these pins don't actually move much at all because the majority of the force is transferred to the driver pins from the key pins. So that's the idea of uh, raking and, and bump, lo or, uh, bump locks, bump keys, sorry. Um, raking and bump keys, they say that it can be bad on the locks and it can damage them. Like if you look up, uh, you can find some forensic pictures online. Someone will, online, someone will look under a microscope of what the pins look like after you do this to it for a while. It, it puts dents and scratches in the pins. So just individually picking pin by pin with a lock is, or pin by pin with a uh, pick is better for the lock than trying to do it another way. But lock pick or lock picking with a bump key or with uh, brakes tends to be the faster method. So you know, if you're actually trying to break into something, then you probably want to use a rake. But if you're just playing around with your own locks, you probably want to use a pick. Learn to do it the right way. So the first thing I did was go out and buy a couple of extremely cheap padlocks just to practice on. First one I picked up. This was like four dollars at uh, at uh, Walmart. Extremely cheap caliber steel padlock. Ideal for tool sheds, garages, cabinet doors. Yeah, very cheap lock. There it is, just your typical padlock. Nothing impressive. Made in China. Says 40 millimeters on it. It took a little bit of time to get used to uh, you know, getting this open, but now that I have, just insert your tension wrench. This particular lock, actually, it was harder than the other lock I picked up. If you put the tension wrench in like this, you can kind of see that if you apply pressure, it, it kind of slips under the, uh, there's like a little flange there. 
you have to keep the the handle of the, t the wrench above these little uh, studs, and if you're not careful, it'll, it'll kind of slip and move around a bit. But if you go in the other way, like so, let's see. Uh, geez. There we go. I kind of like to just use my thumb to push on it. If you get it in, just get it above that stud there. It might slip off, but for the most part, it's fine. And then I'm using the uh, standard pick, not raking it or anything. Just push it in, get it all the way to the back. And then just a little bit of pressure. Try and find the pins that are sticking. Now we go back to the back again. And it's unlocked. So yeah, do that again. Our El Cheap $4 lock. Insert the tension wrench. Ah. So yeah, I'll go ahead and walk through it this time what I'm doing. So you insert the tension wrench, you just apply, apply a very light pressure. It took me a while to get used to how little pressure it actually takes. I, I've heard that was like the number one mistake that people do is they try and force it way too much pressure. If you're trying to rake a lock, it's you, know, you don't have to be as gentle. You can just kind of you know, apply enough tension and let it off. But if you're trying to pick it, just a little bit of pressure. You don't, you don't have to bend the wrench at all. That would be way too much. Just very light touch. Push the pick all the way to the back. Apply that light touch. And with the pick too, I'm holding it kind of like a pencil. I'm using my wrist to go back and forth, move the location. I'm kind of using my fingers to change, to push up. I just see, you see my hand there. So I use the wrist to go back and forth, and then the fingers push up and down, and just very gentle. You want to be able to feel the pins. And also, at first, I was trying to like tell where every pin is, but in reality, it doesn't matter that much. Just go back. You can kind of feel when a pin is getting stuck, and then just do a little bit of force. I'm going to go back to the back again. I start at the back just because it's easier to get the, the wrench all the way, or get the tool all the way back there and then come forward than the other way around. So yeah, slight pressure. Just go along the pins, and every time you actually unlock a pin or you push a pin to the shear line, you can feel it move just a tiny bit in the tension wrench and then the, the plug moves. Let me stop talking so I can actually get that. There we go. And it's open again. So yeah, light pressure. You don't really have to know where every pin is. You just push up, push up slightly, go back and forth, try and find the ones that are stuck and get them unstuck. And you know, very, very light, light pressure. And you hold it out here, hold it kind of like a pencil so you can feel the, the pins. So this time, instead of using the uh, pick, I'll go ahead and use the W rake. This doesn't require as much skill. Instead of actually trying to feel which pin is binding and push it up, you just take the rake, you push it back and forth, and boom, it's open that quick. As I said, raking tends to be quite a bit quicker. And also, like, like any kind of picking, you don't need that much pressure, just a very light touch back and forth. Um, light on both uh, how far you're pushing the pins in with the rake and also your... Uh, your tension wrench fell out.